All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's start with the LST uh, tier list. So this is something I already talked about, right? Um, basically, the way I structure my tier list is pretty much... Um, wait, I, I kind of fucked everything up. My tier list is structured after how... Basically, I structured them after the odds of winning the LEC, okay? So an S tier in the LEC is not quite the same as an LEC, like LEC S tier, like an S tier in Korea or China, all right? This is S tier in the context of winning the LEC. What are the pieces that I look at? Basically, in my mind, I contemplate the meta, the potential of the meta, I, uh, I contemplate uh, the roster potential, and this is, you know, winning the winter split, right? So I use, I, I trust my gut feeling. My, my gut feeling is based off of uh, history of players, history of teams, history of coaches, and um, this is basically my methodology, okay? So basically, in order for a team to succeed, a, a certain certain scenarios need to be achieved, right? Of course, League of Legends is a game that changes super, super much, and a team can succeed very hard on a particular meta and can peak at the right exact time, and that can lead into an LEC victory. And I'm going to try to talk about how those pieces might potentially move, and, and that will be my reasoning as to why I put a team in a specific tier. Right? So we can start off with the S tier. The S tier, I place uh, G2. So the main concern, I think all of the good things uh, can be easily talked about when it comes to G2, but the main concern is how is Yai going to adapt to jungling against opposition that is Bo, Malrang, and Elioya? This is not the same level of competition that he's played against. Yai has had a lot of success playing uh, together with Aika, and his transition into the LEC as a prospect, there couldn't have been a better scenario for a player like Yike. He's moving into a team with players like Caps, Miki, Hans Sama, and a coaching staff that has a very good track record. Jungling in scrims is very different from jungling on stage. You need to be very, very precise and... A lot of the moments, so basically, not less things tend to happen, but your mistakes are heavily punished, and not taking opportunities is a form of mistakes, right? And that shock of that cold water of, of playing on stage is something that I am always curious about, because jungle is a role that is very influenced by, uh, of course, experience. So we've had... A situation like that in the past where a jungle comes into the league and busts you know huge i'm not going i'm not going to continue with my metaphor uh, elioya was fantastic <laughs> that's what i'm trying to say elioya was fantastic but that is not the norm that is rather you know uh, a player that is very unique in itself but i think yike has a team surrounding him that can definitely set him up for success and I think uh, G2 as a team has a history of using their offseason in a very good manner. I think this is something that was shown in last year too, in terms of their preparation. I, I know that LFL uh, occasionally has stage games, but it's not quite the same as, as the LEC stage. The pressure and the stakes are higher, and um, that is important to, to relate to. But I'll be very, very impressed by Ike if he hits the ground running and is playing like a true LEC elite from the get-go. And I think if it happens, it should be celebrated, All right? But I think the surrounding pieces, I think uh, Broken Blade, I think he's, he's decent enough. I think he can uh, be a, a, a decent player on this roster. I think in terms of top laners, I think the main question is, is like how good is Photon going to be? Uh, like that's the main question mark is Fulton going to be that good that he forces uh, a way of playing out of the other players or or is it just going to be the same old same old top lane uh, in Europe right I think Broken Blade is very serviceable I think Caps and of course 
Hansama, Mickey X. Maybe you're not personally hype, hyped on them based off of their um, previous year, but on my end, I think these two players are really, really good. I think personality-wise, from from in terms in terms of the joy and the love for the game, I think that Caps, Mickey, Hansama, they seem to be in the the same kind of uh, sphere of thought, and I think that this environment will be a, a really strong one, and I think that G two. Uh, has really really high ceiling with the players so they are an s tier and the next one for me is koi i put them also in s tier i think uh, similar reasoning to to the previous one i think that koi uh if if you look at what where the meta is right now right uh they did very well last year they they have a lot of depth in their mid lane you know a, a very important piece uh, about being very high up on this list having an a mid laner that is elite in the context of Europe is super super important. Who are those mid laners? Okay, who are those mid laners? You have to think Larsen, Caps, Humanoid. Those are the three that are considered the elite three right now. Perks, of course, is in that conversation naturally, right? But he needs to show us a little bit more for us to be super super confident in in that point. Someone has, someone in the chat says Vitio a bit, no, but Vitio, something that is unique about Vitio, even though he has had regular split games, that definitely puts him on the map and puts him in that conversation. Very strong laner, very strong mechanical player, very good team fighter. Vitio hasn't won a single best of five yet. And winning best of fives requires a very specific character. Vitio is definitely the type of player that has the potential. He has the potential to do something like that. But he needs to go over that hurdle, right? Because go, losing right before that hurdle, that's something that I've seen in the past with the elite tier mid laners, with, with the people that have that elite tier mid laner potential. Viteo, I have memories. We played against Misfits in the best of five series. In game five, Viteo was solo killed by a twisted fate as a Leblanc, right? The pressure rose, right? And that's completely fine, right? Vettio is a very young player. He has a lot of potential and he has a lot of room to grow. And this could be the year he has his breakout year on this Excel roster. But before I see it, I am going to withhold my reservations. But he definitely has the potential. And potential is such a memed word. But Vettio definitely, definitely, you know, <laughs> the correct definition of potential has it. He has shown... Really, really high level games. And that is my definition of, of potential, you know? The glimpses of, of, of brilliance. And in the regular season, Vettio is an absolute, absolute machine. We continue, right? In regards to Koi, I think that Larson can adapt, adjust to matters. Very good on the majors, you know? Uh, we've seen him play uh, the Rises and the Twisted Fates too. I think Larson, uh, in, in my eyes, Preparing against him, I think in the last year he grew a lot as a player. I think he grew a lot as a player and he became a lot less one-dimensional. He's had a lot of series that I think he was a standout player. I still would rate Larson below Humanoid and Caps. But I think Larson is definitely at the level where he can uh, compete and will never be a liability, right? And sometimes even go so far to carry games against the best of the best. Malrang, I think he speaks for himself. I think Malrang is up there together with Bo and Elioya in terms of how excited I am for junglers coming into this next split. And then I think with Upset and Healy no longer playing together, I think Comp and Trimby go into this season as the strongest bot lane on paper. I think Hansam and Mickey can definitely build up that synergy and compete with them. And I think Hansam and Mickey are, you know, the the... Hansama Miki, Trimby Comp, those are the two bot lanes that I will look out for the most. And I think the, the recipe for winning the LEC is often having a super, super strong bot lane with a lot of depth, having an elite TM mid laner and a jungler to support it, and then a top laner that is sane. <laughs> having a top lane that is sane. And I say that sometimes you have those top laners, they are insisting on picking Camille in a very important game and then they die in a 1v1. <laughs> Same top laner is the ones that uh, can adjust to the game state 
and you can also put yourself in that position where regardless of what's going on with you you kind of you are tied into the game and you'll find your ways to be useful you know wonder is a player that is a master of that right we continue so the a tier the a tier i am going to slot in fanatic so what is preventing me from putting Fnatic in the, the S tier? I think in regards to on paper, on paper, I believe Fnatic has made downgrades. But then again, we had a, such an insane roster on paper last year and it didn't amount to much. We got third place twice and that's what it is, right? In my tenure in Fnatic, we went two and one against G2. We beat them out of worlds in the, in the previous year. Coming into this last year, we, we made upgrades on paper and, you know, on paper isn't everything. They've made changes to the coaching staff and the main thing, you know, the main thing with Fnatic is since their approach to the offseason has been to build around Humanoid, right? That's been the approach. Build around humanoids. There was conversations. Maybe they were fishing for Elioya, like everyone else did, right? They kept Ivan. Yeah. They kept Razork. Razork has potential. Really good player, right? And then you have Wunda. Really, really strong player. I think there is no clear player that is an upgrade. I think if you have Wunda on your team, you keep him. You know? They made changes now on the what side? Added Reckless and Rocks. There were conversations in the past, right? You can see in terms of what the rumors were in regards to what roster the changes they wanted to make is they were there were rumors that they were pushing for Kazi, right? Rumors that they were pushing for Kazi. What type of a player is Kazi? Kazi is a player that is very adaptable. He understands the bigger picture and finds ways to be useful regardless of his condition in the game, right? Sometimes he ends his ass off, but it seems like he is always tied into the game uh, mechanically has his has his moments and seems to be on a very similar wavelength to how humanoid wants to approach the game right rox is a player that we had experience with of course uh, in the uh, at the world championship right rox had two very fantastic games but a lot of weight is being put into those games after all we were playing against weaker team regions we managed to have really good draft preparation and i think Rox played super, super well in that game, right? But I think the context is super, super important. I think Rox, the main thing that he brings to the table uh, is his leadership, right? He's, he's, he's a strong character to have on your team and, and brings people together, right? And this is the, the, the hope that Fnatic is, is pushing for, that through this new dynamic and new environment, they're going to make the players that they've built around perform even better, right? And then we have the addition of Reckless. Right? So the main thing here that is holding me back from pushing Fnatic into an S tier is you're going to be in a position you're going to be I don't know why my music keeps pausing you're going to be in a position where Rux and Reckless are now coming into the league. Rux hasn't been playing uh, LEC for, for the last year. They, they had kind of a disappointing last split with K-Corp. They won EU Masters once. And then, of course, the G2 year was a very rough one for Reckless, even though he had moments where he performed well, right? There's a lot of Senna games that I remember that were very good for Reckless. And um, and uh, his, his niche picks is where he performed super, super good, right? And I think you're at a point where, let's say, Fnatic now needs to play Lucian Nami, right? Maybe they have to ban Lucian Nami. There was always like this reckless mini game that they always played in terms of figuring out how reckless can play his maximum comfort and you maneuvering around bans and finding counters around those champions and setting up drafts around those champions in order to find that comfort for reckless because that's how he delivers, right? That's not meta proof in my mind, right? I look back at what, what Reckless played the previous year, right, on K Corp. There's been, he's been playing Zeri, there's the Jin, right? And 
Will there be situations where his comfort will turn into a weakness? Or will it be an indirect strength because he has conviction in what, what he wants to play? Right? That's the main question. But for me, I think Rux and Reckless, even though they start at the same letter, I think they will need a lot of time in order to build up a good lane synergy and figure out ways to, to be very effective. But the hope is that the level of the top side is going to be so much better that Rux and Reckless can enact their strengths deeper into the game, right? I think Reckless is very consistent when it comes into deeper parts of the game. Uh, Rux can find those engages, and if he has the freedom to surpass the potential weakness, which I would say is the lane phase, only from you know projection because i don't have scrim information i'm not i'm just trying to imagine a situation where reckless rocks play together i think they will need some time to mesh and another layer to it is reckless and rocks come into this situation with a lot of pressure a lot of pressure rocks now finally getting his shot at the lec after playing the rls for a long time but moving to berlin is a shock for many people that's a lot of stress to deal with. Being under the lens of the Fnatic fans is a lot of pressure to deal with. Being in a situation with players that demand a lot more is going to be a situation that is also stressful. And another layer to it is Rux and Crusher, they work together, right? And they, they have experience with working with one another. Maybe that could be a disadvantage, maybe it could be an advantage, right? But the last split of this Fnatic roster, they went from a very dominant split and then into summer with utter failure, right? So, I mentioned also Reckless coming into this with a lot of pressure. This is the third time he joins Fnatic. And it feels like it's kind of that do or die moment, right? And Reckless is a player that has performed very well under that pressure, right? Maybe the time that he's had now in K Corp and G2 has given him the right lessons just to come back to Fnatic in the right way and potentially play his best year ever. But there's a lot of intangible factors there. And my reasoning is, you know, just based off of how how easy can I imagine myself Fnatic uh, winning uh, the LEC. And a lot of things need to go right. Humanoid needs to hit the ground running. Razork and Wunder and Humanoid need to become very, very threatening in their gameplay and give the freedom to their bot lane to, to find that comfort again and uh, make sure that practice is something that is very useful for them throughout the year. But we will see how they deal with it. Someone asked me about Shigenda in the chat when it comes to Koi. I, I understand why people might not be that excited about him, but Shigenda is a player that has performed quite well in the ERLs. And I think always in the circumstances that he was thrown into the LEC were circumstances that were not fair nor good. Either split time or he came into teams that uh, didn't have their main mid laner and uh, there was always chaos surrounding Shigenda and what was supposed to be his transition into a higher level of professionalism. So I'm happy that he gets a real shot here uh, at Koi. And I think Shigenda is a good player, strong player. Uh, next in line for the A tier is uh, Vitality. I think Vitality, I think they've put together a very strong roster. I have to admit, I haven't seen Photon play, but I know that he plays a mixture of champions and he doesn't have any champion pool issues. The fact, the fact that uh, 
Vitality went for this approach to uh, import a top laner, I think that's the way to do it, right? If you're going to import in any role in Europe, uh, it should be top lane. Uh, because that's where you go to the World Championship and you really, really have an issue unless your name is like Wunder or um, like or, or Ruamne does fine, right? I think Wunder is, is, a, is a serious outlier, but I am very biased when it comes to Wunder, I can admit that, you know? I've seen Wunder work in multiple environments. I've worked with him in Splice, I've worked with him in G2. I hold uh, Wunder to a very high regard. The other part of it, of course, is Bo. I think Bo finding himself where he can mechanically challenge other players is what is going to make him succeed. And I think he has players around him that definitely will be able to support that. I think of Perks and Kaiser as very good facilitators. Very good facilitators when they play at their best. And I think that Vitality's identity is so clear. And the question will be, will Bo be allowed to play in a certain meta that allows him to mechanically test players? And that's the most exciting thing. Someone in the chat said, G2's Wunder is not Fnatic's Wunder, though. Huge difference, because the dynamics are different. And what is required of Wunder to succeed in Fnatic is very different from what was required to him in, in, in G2, right? But Wunder is still the same old, I can tell you that. Another thing, you know, another concern that people have in regards to Vitality is that, oh, Vitality... Uh, will have a Chinese-speaking player, and they'll have a Korean-speaking player, and they'll have three English-speaking players. How is this going to work out? I think Vitality has done a very good job of letting Bo take his time. He's been streaming in Europe, he's been living in Europe, he's been connecting with the team for such a long time, right? Bo has been signed... It wasn't like a spontaneous pickup in the off-season, he's been around in Vitality for quite some time. They really, really lubed up the LEC for him. I am excited for Vitality. And this circumstance where they win the LEC is very plausible. I think Neon, Kaiser, Perks, really, really solid players that have the potential to win the league. Uh, I think this is a very, very well-constructed roster, uh, and I'm excited for Vitality. But maybe his Bo has to play Maokai. <laughs> maybe Bo has to play Maokai. There's a lot of intangibles here with Vitality. I wouldn't put them above G2 or Koi right now. As someone in the chat said, what about Larson? He seems washed up. What makes you think that he's washed up? Losing to Zeka, is that what makes Larson washed up? Winning LEC, is that what makes you seem think that Larson is washed up? Who, what, what earth is Larson washed up? Like, Larson was great at Worlds, by far the best European mid at that time, that's wrong Ethan. I think Humanoid has one, had one of the best Western performances of all time on an individual basis at the World Championship. He did get clapped by Humanoid, right? Humanoid on Silas did clap him. But Humanoid, in terms of laning, is really insane. I mean, he's a mid laner who can go irrelevant, but he's not a man who will 1v9. Well, I, I agree. I agree with the notion that Humanoid and Caps is better. I just disagree with your word choice. I 
And Larson definitely has a high level of consistency, but I think Caps and Humanoid have higher highs. We continue. We continue. Uh, the next one here, it's a tough one, right? Because I would want to put Excel between here. So they're, they're like my third A team. I don't think they quite belong here, but I think they, they are here. I think they've put together a good roster as well. I think they have a strong coaching staff with Nelson and Youngbuck. Uh, I think that they showed last year that they could find an identity for the team. And uh, even with a roster that was on paper not the strongest, they managed to, to, to achieve much and they almost kicked us out of playoffs, right? We almost didn't make it to Worlds, right? I think that I would put Excel below these four teams, but I'll put them above everybody else, right? So I think Xerxes is a strong pickup. I think Xerxes uh, had, had some really good games on Astralis. I think that uh, Oduamna is a strong pickup too. I think Viteo and Patrick, I think individually they've had games and performances both in scrims and also on stage in the regular season that have really, really put them on the radar. But I think when it comes to playoffs, this is where I feel like I have no good memories of, of Patrick and no good memories of Viteo. And that's the main thing here. I think this is a circumstance where they can definitely succeed and surpass that barrier that I have imagined right in front of them. I've definitely, you know, I put a lot of stock into that ability to push through and to win games. But before I see that in action, when push comes to shove, I will have my reservations about XL. Targamas as well, you know, the, the very curious thing, right? G2 had a massive, massive problem. Huge problem, all right? Massive problem with the fact that they couldn't play Yumi. They couldn't play Lushunami. Who was at fault? Was it Targamas or Flaket? Targamas seems to be very peculiar with what he wants to play and what he seems comfortable with in all of the, you know, in, in all of the G2 voice comms, he seems to me not be talking as much, right? Mechanically decent player, seems to just follow wherever Yankos goes. I feel like Excel, the Excel roster kind of needs Yankos. <laughs> That's what I feel. They need a dominant voice that is going to drive the game. Because that is the underlying question for me. It's like the history of Excel rosters, in my mind, was always this team that if they found momentum in the games, they could close out the games. But when the games became a lot more contested, they kind of looked like headless chickens. And I have this fear that it might look like the same thing here uh, in this Excel roster. I remember some rumor about Jankos not wanting to play with Targamas. I also remember some rumor that Jankos didn't want to play with Odo Amne. Uh, but this was a long time ago and maybe I remember it wrong. <laughs> so it's like, I think Targamas has shown some moments, but it's like we saw some patterns in the way G2 play and it was like, like they were playing with like rally points and they were just like waiting for each other and um, there was some room for exploitation there. And I think this is one of those rosters that on paper, you know, each piece, if you look at their previous year, looks decent, but I think it's, it's, it's always very situational. To be fair, G2 regressed since 2020, which is completely natural, right? Completely normal, considering they had the best roster of all time and now no longer have the best roster of all time. Targama might have the largest champion pool in the whole LEC, but he also didn't play the correct champs. So 
So let's let's pull it up, okay? Let's pull it up. So he played a bunch of different shit, right? He played two games of Yumi, lost them, and then never touched that shit again, okay? Nami three times, Ross three times, and never uh, never went for that again. Okay? So this this is like if we pull up Leaguepedia, Leaguepedia, and then we pull up uh, the 2022 season. And then we press the LEC. And then what we do is we look at summer playoffs. And then we look at pick bands. Peaky blinders. Individual games. So we scroll down all the way to the finals. This is G2's pick and ban. Lucian, Zeri, blue side ban. I don't know if it was Flacket. I don't know if it was Targamas. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then, after getting Bobby murdered by the Kalista, they banned Lucian, Zeri, Kalista. Once again, don't know if it's a Targamas problem or a Flacket problem, or maybe both. And then finally, Rogue go on blue side and they ban the Yumi. And then they play Zeri Soraka into Severe Lulu. Not sure. I didn't understand why G2 don't pick Lulu. Like, Z Lulu Zeri was kind of a no brainer thing uh, at this point in the game. So, all in all, some questions surrounding Targamas, right? As a player. I, c I cannot. Put Targamas in the same box as a Mickey and a Hilly and a Trimby. I can't. So we shall see. I put them as fifth. In the B tier, I put Mad Lions. I think Mad Lions, you know, they have Chasey, who I don't know too much about. I don't know too much about. I think the main thing for Mad Lions, I think in the right meta, in the right meta, I think they can jump, right? I feel like almost Niski, he bribed someone at Riot, okay? I feel like he bribed, bribed someone at Riot because they buffed Lissandra, they buffed Rise, and they buffed Twisted Fate. Three champs. That Niski performs quite well on. So. In the right meta. I think that Mad Lions. Can be super strong. In the right meta. For players like Hilly and Karzi. They can be very very strong. Niski in the right meta. Can be very strong. Elioia, I think, is a very well-rounded jungler, and I think he's definitely S-tier. I think that um, he's quite good. Someone wrote, I think Karzi might be the weakest bot laner in whole LEC. Well, ah, I don't think so. You always, always have to look at the pairs, you know? I think that Hilly and Karzi together could be very dangerous. I'm very excited for Mad Lions because I believe that this is a team where Hilly will be able to perform a lot better. We didn't have a good environment for, for what, what, what Hilly's needs are, right? But that goes both ways always. It's like, as a player, you need to understand and try to push for what you want to achieve and what you need. But also, as a group, we need to nurture our players, right? And we didn't manage to do this. And I think here, considering I know how Mac is, I know how Niski is, I know how Karzi is, like this this place is gonna be an absolute vibe that I think Hilly is going to enjoy super super much. 
And I hope that Hilly comes into the season with, with, with fury and vengeance. But this is very on the personal side. I, I think I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, me and Elias, we, we are teamless right now. I hope that Hilly comes in and avenges us. <laughs> I hope he avenges us and, you know, he, he, he fights for all of us. Karzi is a bit of a psychopath, but it seems like his psychopath antics uh, don't change his state of mind in the game, which is a strength. To be fair, Kaiser and Karzi never won lane. Very rarely they won lane. Kaiser was finding a lot of impact by the 3v3s in mid and finding invade timers together with Elioya. This was what Kaiser was looking for the most. Kaiser was diving top and they were sacking bot for it and he made sure that every time he went missing that the whole map felt it. This, is Kai this was Kaiser's strength. That's why I mentioned before, Vitality, Perks and Kaiser can definitely facilitate their jungler well. I think that's like a good construction there. Karzi and Kaiser weren't super strong in lane. I can tell you that much. They really drafted for lane. Often they, they drafted for 3v3s. And then they leveraged that into bot, which I think, to be fair, is a very good way of playing the game. Very strong way of playing the game. All in all, I think Mad Lions, you know, um, in the, the the main question there is the meta reliance, right? If there is a situation where everything is going to be bot centric, then I think Hilly is so super strong because I think his lane phase, that the, how 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 much effort he puts into it is a very big strength. But I think in the situation where Mad Lions can be that three unit that invades and looks to pressure, then I think it's super good. But I think if Elioya is playing Wukong and the bot lane is like Lucian Nami and then the mid lane is like Victor Oriana, I um, I don't know how things are going to look like. Right? That's my main concern for Mad Lions. So the main concern, Meta Reliance. Patrick is definitely not the best uh, AD carry uh, over the last three years. But uh, that is indeed uh, a hot take. Another team that I want to put in B is uh, Team Heretics. Team Heretics. I, I have a good opinion of Ruby. Um, uh, Evi. I, I want to call him Eva every time because... Um, I watch Attack on Titan. This is um, a roster that has, uh, you know, so some good experience. I think I feel like Team Heretics is a roster that is going to be very good at solving problems. I think Jack Spectra is a very exciting player. I think Mursa is a player that deserves another chance. But I feel like this team might be held back by their potential ceiling. I think that they will reach their ceiling very well, but I think that ceiling is definitely lower than everybody else. That's what I see Team Heretics. And the question will be, it's like, how good can Jack Spectra and Ruby really, really be? Because I think that this is a team that will figure out how they want to play together effectively. They have Peter Dunn, they have Seal, you know? I'm curious, Team Heretics that just bought their slot, how are they going to figure out the gaming house, how they're going to do all that, all that jazz? Maybe they just take over the old Misfits uh, location. We shall see. But I think this is a team that with the experience aboard, I think that they're going to reach their potential in a very effective manner. What that potential will be, I place them around B tier. But definitely a dark horse. 
I think the B tier, this is the Dark Horse tier. Honestly. They, they are definitely the, the, the Dark Horses. So, finally, I am going to put BDS. If you want me to explain some of the best teams, you have to look at the VOD. If, if I go back and, and explain it again, just because you're late, everyone would go insane. So I'm going to put Team BDS C. I think that Team BDS has made some upgrades. Uh, greetings, Yamato. Any chance you will make a player tier list too? I will do that after the winter split. I will do it after the winter split and we will have one coming into the spring split. I will put BDS above Astralis and SK. I think that they've, they've made, maintained the majority of uh, their uh, you know, team. Uh, looking back at uh, their uh, ERL run, which I think was, was decent. I think Crowney and Adam coming back as experienced players that have fallen out of LEC and then worked their way back into LEC is 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 a exciting thing because I think that they've managed to still actively improve while playing in the RLs. This BDS Academy, the previous one, was beating the main BDS roster for a very long time. And I think it's very important that we judge BDS accurately, not based over the previous year, because the previous year was was such a shame. It was such a shame in terms of what we heard, the rumors, the interviews, all the conversations online with how, how, how everyone was behaving. It was quite disappointing, right? It is disappointing for, for everyone because, you know, this is the LEC, right? There needs to be a standard in the LEC. But I think that uh, Shio is decent. I think Adam has had some strong performances in the ARLs and... Uh, Maybe, you know, the question is, will he be able to replicate that uh, in the LEC? This is a second chance, right? And I think Crownshot and Labrov, I think that's going to be a decent combination. I think right now, Labrov, I think of him as a player that plays ranged champions pretty decently. I think when he plays ranged matchups... You know, Labrov is a player that has been reaching rank one and he's been competing for top ladder spots uh, through playing range supports. Like, this is where he's comfortable. Um, and I think in the current meta, uh, Crowny and uh, and Labrov will be able to uh, to do that. I think Crowny and Labrov can be decent. But of course, we put them C because we have the same concerns like everyone, you know? It's like... Will Adam go full rock and roll, or will it be a little bit more reserved this time around? Will uh, will BDS be able to beat SK and Astralis? That will be the question. But I think if I predict the games against one another, I think for now, in the current meta, I will uh, lean towards BDS. Thing is, Olaf is not that weak right now. <laughs> Like, even if he picks Olaf this time around, I will not, I will be fine with it. Because this, this champion is actually strong. <laughs> Imagine a world now, it's like Maokai jungle is being played, Sijuani's jungle is being played, Darius is good into some matchups. It's like the potential for Darius and, uh, and, um, and Olaf is definitely there in the current, uh, current meta. So don't underestimate those champions. I think SK has some decent players, you know, Marcoon, Exekick. I think that's cool, uh, but all in all, not super excited. Yeah, that was a very good Olaf game, right? Very, very good Olaf game, if I remember correctly. But this is where I would put things. This is where I put things. So this is my tier list. Any final questions, guys? Keep in mind, my my conditions for my tier list is what are the odds that I believe that they're going to win the a, a split? Like, what are the odds that I believe they're going to win the winter split? S tier doesn't mean 100%. 
Which two teams do you go see going to MSI currently, which is very far away, right? Then I would like I would say that I would say G2 and Koi have the highest chances. But this could be the difference of like let's say if we divide up the percentages, it's like G2 has a 20% chance to win the split. Koi has a 18% chance to win the split. Uh, Vitality 10, Fnatic 9, XL 7, and then 5, and we just distribute the percentages, right? Which team do you believe could have the highest peak if everything aligns? Honestly, if everything aligns, okay, if everything aligns, it would have to be Vitality. Like, let's say, let's imagine a world where Photon has the biggest top lane donger on the planet and he just shits on every top lane in Europe. And then Bo just swings his horse Hecarim dick all over the rift and Perks is absolutely popping off and he's finding, like, he just got, he has a marriage buff now, he just got married, you know. Like, that would be like the, if, if if everything aligns, you know, Orion's belt. It never works out for Vitality though. Maybe Vitality is just cursed. After firing Yamato Cannon, taking them to the World Championship. Vitality, come on, man. Maybe they're just cursed. Team Vitality. Twenty eighteen World Championship. Twenty seventeen season. Didn't make playoffs. Didn't make playoffs. Didn't make playoffs, but here I joined, so I'm kind of just burning myself. They really, really dropped down hard. And then 2018, people thought it was he was crazy. Yamato Cannon bringing in all of these Giants players. What is he doing? What is he doing? Why is he not bringing in the players that we know the names of over and over again? Who is Jizuke? Who's the big Jizzer? Who's Jack Troll? Who's Amadeo Cavallo? Gilius? Really? Kikis? Kikis and Gilius? Really? Boom. Fourth place, losing to Splice. Third place, slamming Misfits to the floor. World Championship, beating RNG, beating Gen G twice, previous world champion. And then losing to C9 twice with massive gold leads. <laughs> uh, Shibal. 2019, trying something experimental. We go for Mowgli, world champion Mowgli, who's now in Hanwa life. We try to piece, piece some things together. We struggle. We struggle because of health issues. There's problems with health. There's problems with... With, uh, with the structure, this problem with the building, a lot of things that we knew that we had to learn from and to build off of. But Vitality wanted to go in a different direction. We made playoffs twice, right? We made playoffs too. Cabo Shard was performing out of his mind and we um, lost to Fnatic. 2019 Fnatic, Nemesis Pentakill on Kale, Aish. Summer Split, we got, uh, was a really rough one. I remember we were playing Severe Yumi and we got 2v2 killed by Tarek and Sona. Oof, tough times. 2020 season, the rebuild. The rebuild. What happened in the 2020 season? They didn't make playoffs. They didn't make playoffs, guys. Oof. They didn't make playoffs. Twenty twenty two didn't make playoffs. Twenty twenty one they made playoffs. 
But who did they lose to? Yamato Ken. Unlucky, guys. Unlucky. Obviously, I'm just memeing, guys. I'm just memeing. I have a lot of love for Vitality, you know. I made a lot of my career in Vitality. Vitality is a blessing. I, I, I'm a friend with, with, with Neo, the ownership, you know. I, 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 Vitality is a very dear place in my heart. I think this roster is definitely it. I, I think this, this roster is a banger, man. And I think Coach Carter, man. Finally, Coach Carter, you know, he d has do been doing bits and he's received a lot of credit for what's going on in Misfits. And I think, uh, you know, this is also exciting to, to have Coach Carter on this, on this roster. Another thing that I wanted to check out, who, who else do Vitality have on their, uh, on, their, um, on their coach list? Who are the coaches? Player roster, who are the coaches? Who are the coaches? I think they have Yarnan, right? Mephisto's out. Kays. Kays is one. Kays is a banger, guys. Bro, you can have Kays on your team. Bro, I tried to get Kays into Fnatic. Bro, I, I've tried to get this guy into every team that I've been in. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Bro, this guy's track record was completely mental. Mental, I tell you. Completely crazy. Ay, ay, ay. Fnatic 2018, Team Liquid 2019 to 2000, like 2018 to 2019. Boom. This Team Liquid was winning. Origin, bro. August 2019, you guys, like, Origin was a strong team. And then when he did some shit on Twitter, they removed him. And then all of a sudden, Origin couldn't even fucking make playoffs anymore. Like, his track record is crazy. And all of all of the players that have worked with him always say good things. I like, guess this is a player that I, this is a person that I've always chased, man. Opinions on LS? I I don't know. I I don't consume his content. I don't. I try to make my own. <laughs> I try to. I, I I try to get some some viewership, and I try to. I try to get a piece of the market share. <laughs> I'm doing my best. He has tapped into something. I'm curious how they managed to do that. Anyhow. Anyhow. With the LEC predictions, with the... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I just closed it like that? Please tell me it's still there. Ah, nice. By being controversial. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do predictions. So basically, obviously, I put myself at a very big disadvantage here. Because I am doing my predictions based off of the tier list, right? But I could see game week one, game, like day one, I could see the games. And then maybe I change my mind completely. But I'm going to do the crazy thing of just predicting the whole week. Like a psychopath. Just so you can come back and say, Yamato, Yamato. You were wrong, bitch. My favorite team is actually better than you predicted. <laughs> and that's okay, because you give me interactions. And that's all I want. That's all I want, baby. Give me interactions. G2 versus XL. Who's going to win? Ladies and gentlemen, I choose G2. BDS versus Koi. I choose BDS. Psych. That's the wrong number. TH. Team Heretics beats out Astralis. SK versus Mad. Mad. Are you mad? Fnatic versus Vitality. It's a big banger, by the way. It's a big banger. Raz lol. Habibi Raz. Is this Razzle Plasm? Is it our boy Raz? He gets VIP. Wait. Twitch.tv. Twitch.tv channel. Raz the Rizzler. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Razzlol. VIP, baby. Welcome to the jungle. This is where things get fucking wild, baby. 
That's <laughs> name changing to Rizlol. <laughs> Fnatic versus Vitality. I am going Vitality. I'm going Vitality. The issue here, right? I'm going to come across as such a Fnatic hater. But the issue is Fnatic have such a fucking tough schedule. They have a very tough schedule. And I'm looking at their matches. They play Fnatic, they play Vitality, they play G2, and they play Koi. They are getting completely Bobby murdered. Like, <laughs> this is such a rough one, dude. Oh, man. SK versus BDS, I'm going to go with BDS. Mad versus Astralis, I'm going mad. Bro, Mad Lions have the easiest schedule of all time. Vit versus TH, I'm going Vitality. Koi versus XL, I'm going Koi. Fnatic versus G2, I'm going G2. Team Heretics, BDS versus XL, XL. Astral versus G2, G2. Whoa, whoa, what happened? I just fucking entered the matrix. Fnatic versus Koi, Koi. Vit versus Mad. Vitality. So what standings are we going to have at the end of this? This is post-draft. So keep in mind, I'm, I'm exposing myself here to a lot of unpredictability here. A lot of unpredictability. Why I don't share everything? Bro, it's like, why Why would I? You know, it's like, I, I don't like selling drama. Uh, like, this is nothing, nothing tied to LS, by the way. I'm just saying, I, I, I have no interest, even if I'm going to freelance for the rest of my life. I have no interest of only skewing my viewpoint and my perspective Uh, and and sharing that, giving my context only, it's such an unfair position to put anyone I worked with in, you know? I try to be fair and I try to share what I can, but I don't want to ever share something that can be misunderstood. It's like, even in the context of what happened at C9, it's like, I know I have a lot of information, but I'm not going to ever talk about that. You know, I heard a lot of shit. And I hear a lot of shit, but I hear a lot of shit because people trust me. Why O3 Fnatic? They have a very tough schedule, man. They have such a tough schedule. <laughs> Yamato hates Fnatic. No? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Alright. Because he's salty, man. <laughs> already missed you in LEC my lord I can announce right now guys I can announce right now I'm going to be on the LEC broadcast week 2 and then I'm going to be on broadcast week 4 and then I'm going to do my absolute best to convince the LEC that uh, you know maybe they can give me some more time on that man but we're co-streaming we're doing the LPL, we're doing the LCK, we're going to be live viewing the LEC, we're going to be following each and every game. Let's do a little meta tier list, alright? Let's do a little meta tier list, alright? I don't know why this shit is so weird, I'm going to just deactivate that. Where's, where's the... Where? The shy tier. So the shy tier is you need to be you need to be a crazy warlock to play these champs. Okay. 
I'm gonna be on the analyst desk, man. They they don't have the, the guts to put me on uh, put, put put me up there to to talk for an over an hour. Alright. So let's just throw all the champions up there. So Aatrox is relevant. Darius belongs there. Um GP is up there. Like we we're just I'm not rating them just yet. I'm just throwing up all the champions that are relevant, okay? Is any psychopath enough to mm missing something or are we missing something Jax <laughs> what there got there Gragoon Gragoon where's Gragoon no 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 shit the shite here don't move up <laughs> no no what happened no! What? Oh man, what? The website died. Nah, man. I just... Man, I just wanna add one. How do, how, how do I do it? Add tier below, that's how it is. The shy tier. Bro, whatever, I can't fix it. I can't fix it, guys, I can't. Okay. So, let's try again. Aatrox, Camille, Gragas, Gwendolina, GP, uh, Fiora, Kesante, Kesante, JC, Kenan, Orni, Renegaton, we have uh, Maokai, Rumbel, Adam tier, <laughs> the shy tier is basically champs that only very spe specific people can play, okay? So for example, Nidli, oh, I want Nidli, so I'm not gonna say. Nar, Olaf. <laughs> Nivia, the shy tier. Guys, we the shy tier is we we're still talking about the LEC, okay? We're still talking about the LEC, so it's very important to keep that in mind, okay? We're still talking about the LEC. We 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 are not gonna list every the shy champion because this is not, this is not gonna be a global tier list. This is going to be an LEC meta tier list, okay? Okay. I think we have everything, right? Sion. What's weird is that I, I don't feel like any top laner is S tier. I feel like a lot of them are A tier. It's like S tier is blind pick, first pick, really strong, is going to be good in most games. Like... That's that's where I'm at. You know? S tier champion to me is blind pickable, like super, super strong in every game. Like for example, uh Lucian Nami, I would put an S tier, right? And I, I think currently for top lane meta, I don't think anything stands out there. I feel like there's just like like A is a champion that can perform super, super good, but is like situationally good. 
you know? Yeah, th th this is this is where my headspace is at currently. Like, the thing is, if if rise if rise mid didn't exist, I will put rise higher. Because I I just think it's B tier because you could put a mid. I don't even think Fiora is S tier. Like, if if this was Asia, I would probably put it like that. It's like, I'm in between, you know? It's like... If we want to view it like that, then yeah, like rise is S tier, but it's like it's 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 going to be very rare where I'm gonna be like, okay, rise mid is really bad here, and I want to send rise top. It's it's so rare, you know. Yeah, Mordi could be played, like in some cases, but I don't want to get too niche, you know? Do you think Mundo will see play? I think Mundo might see play if it's, if like enemy blind picks like some AP top. So Mundo, I, I just don't see like, where are you going to play Mundo here, you know, if this is the meta. I think Mauka has a hard time laning against every champion on this list. That's why I put D tier. I know everyone has watched Bin playing Camille, but Bin playing Camille is not quite the same game. Okay? It's like if Bin plays Camille... If Bin plays Camille... I think... It's not the same. No, no, no. You should kiss me and breathe. It's not the same as Bin, okay? Bin Camille, it's pornographic to uh, watch his Camille soul keywords, okay? Is Zach somewhere on the list? Like... He's in the shy tier. It's like the shy tier is experimental shit that can be can be like really good in some niche cases. Yeah. 
keep in mind here, right? For Camille, it's like when I think of I, yeah, I'm comparing. It's like I could consider putting Olaf up there. It's like I'm comparing. I'm comparing these champs to the champs above, right? No, Rise is not the best pick top. It's like it can be played into a few things. Yeah, we're not going to sit here and put every champion in the game on the list, okay? I might just remove the shy tier because you guys are missing the point. <laughs> it's like we're putting champs that might see play, okay? But we're not going so extreme that we're looking at fucking Doctor Strange uh, once in a lifetime uh, situation, okay? We're not doing that. Wukong mana costs are too rough. Sejuani, now that's a good shout actually. Sejuani is a champ that I missed, but... Like... I think you don't want to play Sejuani against any of the champs uh, in uh, in A tier. But yeah, I, 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 like I think this is how it looks like, right? And and keep in mind, right? It's like A tier is champions that have strengths but also weaknesses, right? It's like if you are picking Renekton and the enemy has a Gragas, then maybe Gragas in that game is S tier, right? Uh, but it's always dependence on context which is very important when we're making like draft tier lists and champion tier lists that you always remember that I'm trying to think of these champions of where 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 can they find themselves being good how often right i think olaf and camille could be argued for to put in this box you know could be it's like borderline It's like everything is very rock, paper, scissory here. It's like... A lot of these matchups are skill matchups. I, I think this is, this is reasonable in my mind. I think like blind picking top won't be like the easiest thing, you know? It's like we will see like Renekton and Nar and they will be sometimes in games where they will be completely useless. Just to like make top stable. You know? The reason I'm not so keen on like the AP champions is still like I haven't seen enough signs that uh, like justifies picking these AP champs top. Like you don't want to invite like solo laners to buy like magic resistance. The thing is, the reason I put Kaysanta here is because I honestly don't think it's that strong. Like, 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 sure, you could put Kesanta here, but I feel like the games where Kesanta is up against like Gwen and Nar, they they always look like very hard games. Like, like all games where I see Kesanta after the nerves, he he looks not that great. I feel like Kesanta is a bit of a bait. It's a bit of a bait in my mind. So we can move on, I think. Yeah, Gwen as well. It's like, Kesante gives you prior early, can maybe secure you a herald. Kesante scales well, he doesn't, right? I, I like obviously scaling, scaling for every champion. It has to be contextualized to every other champion in the game. All nine champions determine how well you scale, right? Olaf does really well into Kesante. Olaf does well into Kesante. You can play Camille into Kesante, Gwen into Kesante. You can play Nar into Kesante. Kesante does is a very strong early game champ he can cue the wave he can push he can do well darius does really well into kesante but the main thing is kesante is really really broken in lane 
Like he just Qs the wave, he stacks his Q, doesn't have mana cost, has really high health region, really good at pushing the wave and setting up dives. Like you see, maybe Kesante Elise could be a combo, you set up a dive, right? And if you want to fight around the first Herald and Kesante being in a position where you have reasons for the enemy to enter into your sphere of influence and Kesante can reach targets, he can be very strong. But there's been many games where the enemy outranges and you need to fight against like Gwen and Nar in teamfight contexts, Kesante becomes very weak. And this is this is primarily from looking at pro play, you know. Yeah, of course you can't just pick Darius, right? I, I'm I'm not uh, saying that, right? But there are champions that are pretty decent. I I am not so sold on Kesante. I think Kesante is bait. I think Kesante is a bit of a bait. Okay. Uh, let's continue. Create a new tier list. Uh, let's move on to jungle. I think jungle. Let's let's think now. I think Maokai. I think Sejuani. We have Wukong. Uh, we have Elise Navidad. We have uh, Zach. We have um, Leeson. We have Vi. Viego. You have um, Hecarim. Graves, maybe. Kindred is one. Did we miss anything? Like Poppy maybe? But guys, this is not the tier list yet. Relax. Thank you very very much, John himself, 84. Nidalee, okay guys, let's not. Michael Gervais. <laughs> Nidalee is good because it's a flex pick. Oh, I know what to do, guys. <laughs> Malrang tier. <laughs> Udir? I think I think Udir is a strong champ. Okay. Wait, well, how the fuck do I remove this shit? Bro, I can't. Whatever, we just have... Rumble in the jungle? No, guys. Rumble. Rumble jungle. It's... Rumble in the jungle is leader mid tier. <laughs> okay? <laughs> that's... 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 That's rumble. <laughs> 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 like the Malrang tier is just the bow tier too, okay? Well, honestly, Mm. 
Nabra of Echo. Honestly, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. I don't know. I, I think Silas, Silas Jungu, guys, he can't even clear all his camps. Imagine, imagine Silas. I'm surprised Lee is this high. It's not that high, right? Like Lee being, Lee having seven junglers ahead of him. I think, yeah, like we can do this. I think Zach, I would rather have Zach in a lot of cases than, than, than Lee. I think that's fair. Lee and F tier? <laughs> Lee and F tier? <laughs> Lee and F tier? <laughs> but Canyon played it, K-Drill! <laughs> Canyon played it! <laughs> Lee and Malang tier? Yeah, he's gonna fucking buy Knight's Vow into fucking... Lee Luden's Tempest or some shit. Uh, he's gonna buy the most cocktail build on the planet. <laughs> Malrang slash bow tier. That's 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 what it is. <laughs> what about Belveth? Heart Steel is so underrated on Javan Lee, so Mapasaurus just Publicly exclaimed that he's on crack. Uh, Zin in remake tier. <laughs> I think I think this is this is a pretty fair right here is is where I'm at. I, I think this this is pretty good. <laughs> Malang's alt count. <laughs> Honestly, Udir might be low key OP, you know. I like I don't know why why pro players are so hesitant to 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 play him. I don't I don't understand what the issue really is about Udir. Bro, I, I tried to make my jungle play Udir into Wukong even before the rework. Like I think I think Udir is low key OP, you know? I I think I think Udir is low key OP. The issue with Talia is like Talia is here. That's the issue with the Talia. Talia is you need leader mid tier. Tarek jungle is actually really good. Yeah, you could hear your midline. I'm doing the Raptors. I saw it on synapse. <laughs> Bo popped off with Talia and FPX when he played. Well, let's see if Perks wants to play fucking Kled to support his boy. <laughs> Belveth? I don't know how to judge Belveth, but... You can put Belveth in an Elioia tier. <laughs> Honestly, maybe we see Rise Diana into, I mean, Yasu Diana into Rise. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Could happen. Damn, you're looking good on Euphoria, by the way. Thank you very much. It's easy to look good next to people that look so damn good. It's infectious. Dagda and Dracos are sexy, sexy people, my friend. You want Kartus? We put him in the leader mid 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 tier, bro. If 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 you find a way to play AD mids, the, like there's a lot of a lot of potential. Like you really want me to put Silas on the list? Okay, I can put Silas on the list. Okay, I put him next to these homies. Okay.
I'm considering uh, what to do with Wu. I think Wu is a bit bait, but I think... Because I think Wu is a lot worse. So if you're playing Wukong into Maokai Sejuani, you kind of hate your life. But Wu is Monkey. Like if you play Wu into Kindred, into Viego, Vi, I think you're happy. I think we, we ended here for jungle, guys. We ended here for jungle. I like that Kato just showed up to talk shit about listen, and then he went went about his business again. <laughs> really based. Buzzed. All right, new one. Let's do mid lane, guys. Mid lane. This we can. This one is pretty easy. Rise, rise. Make them remember you. Rise. What mid lanes are being played right now in the game? Let me think. Kukli, uh, Ari, Leblanc. Uh, mm, Talia, Lissandra, Galio, Oriana Banana, Victor, Victor, Victor. Bro, let me tell you guys this story, okay? There's like, at, at one point, Selfmade just showed me this video of this dude walking around in the middle of the street with his dick out, filming himself for a TikTok. And all he said was, Victor, Victor, Victor. And I, I could, I, like, every time someone wanted to pick Victor against us, or, or we picked Victor. We had to say it the same way the guy did it. Victor. <laughs> it just, it really stuck. <laughs> no. Why is that button there, man? <laughs> oh man, why is this button there, man? I can't believe it. Can we get a Chovy tier? I'm a big fan of Chovy. Can we get a Chovy tier, please? No. Syndra. Leader tier. We call it the leader tier, okay? Oriana. Bro, why is Talia not on mid? <laughs> Rise. Make them remember you rise. Malzahar. Malzahard. Cassio. Don't think I will. Fucking playing champion without boots. Anivia? Anivia! Honestly, I'm just checking if there's something missing. <laughs> Do we put Karma in the... In the... What's his name? Irelia into leader tier? Honestly, like if someone blind picks Syndra and you didn't pick jungle yet and you slam like Irelia Cartus or some shit like this, like... Pfft. Rough game, by the way. Bro, like, 
I can definitely see situations where like Yasu really I could be crazy. Yon, I think, is generally speaking quite good. Okay, I don't want to drift too far away from uh, from uh, what is realistic to see in the first week, okay, guys? So let's reorganize this a bit. I think... Javan mid. <laughs> oh man. You really love Javan, bro. Honestly, this looks pretty good to me. Let me look at this a little bit. Let me look at this a bit. Let's let's let it marinate, okay? The, the thing is, the reason I put these champions in C tier is, it's like, the more situational champions are, the, the lower on the list I want to put them. You know? The more situational champions are, the lower on the list I want to put them. And Galio is extremely circumstantial. I think Ari and LB are not so good. I think Galio, like for example, if you have Camilo on your team, then Galio maybe is B tier, maybe is A tier. But... If you play Galio into any of these champs, maybe into Akali, like even into Akali, it's hard. It's, it's very difficult. It's like, Akali, Galio doesn't have good matchups. You need to really, really have the right jungler. You need to have the right top laner. It's it's really, really rare, you know? Vex could potentially be here. I, I think Vex is, is like okay-ish. Is Akali laneable into Rise? It's tough. It's like Vex should be like in between. Something like that, you know? Karma is also extremely circumstantial, you know? Like, yeah. You know. Both Rise and Cast getting nerfed next patch though. I guess I guess since there's patches in the future, we should never do tier lists. Why do we even make predictions if the games are gonna be played? We're gonna know the answer anyway. Patches are gonna happen in, in, in the future, so like even 13.2, why do we even discuss 13.2 if 13.3 will come out? So why waste time with 13.2? Then the issue is 13.3. After 13.3, there'll be 13.4. I'm going to start playing League when we're playing on the last patch. Because... No, keep in mind, I'm, I'm, I'm saving. I'm saving it. Like, for those... Like... Uh, okay, uh, this this is my mid lane tier list. This is where my headspace is at right now. Honestly, shit. I don't want to put Malzahar there. Malzahar goes down. Fuck Malz. 
Uh, fucking, I don't want to have Miles out there, guys. Shit. I need to take another print screen. There we go. Actually, that's that's the 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 cable. That's 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 what's up, guys. That's what we're doing. Okay. 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 Bot lane. Bot lane. Yes. I don't know, bot lane is so weird. Bot lane is so, so weird, guys. It's like... Bot lane is kind of weird to do a tier list because it's so super reliant, you know? It's like it's it's weird to play Zeri Zeri Silver because it's like it's tied to Yumi, you know. It's just uh, we do this <laughs> bow tier. <laughs> Uh, the main thing is, right, it's like, like this separation, this is the separation, right? Th this is the separation. And, um, th th this is the main separation. Zaya is strong, yes, but the issue is Zaya cannot lane against anything of this above. Zaya buffs were pretty big. No, this is this is Lucian Nami, okay? This is Lucian Nami and Yumi lanes. So Lucian Nami, Lucian Nami and Yumi lanes. So Yumi Sivizeri, okay? But without Yumi, I don't rate Zeri and Sivi that high.
I think that Lulu Zeri is a bit of a bait. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Because the, the reason I think it's a bait is because it's picked into Lucian Nami, and I think it's losing. It's not the same as it used to be. It can lane well, but the issue is Zeri... Zeri lost a lot of her range. And I think Lucian Nami dominate uh, Zeri Lulu as the game progresses. The, the main issue with Lucian Nami is the, the, the range. It's, it's the, the range is too, too big, big of a problem. But I think here Ash, Varus, Kate are, are definitely juicers. Like this is this is where I'm at right now. I really think this is this is it right now. Now, uh, Zeri is very happy to have. Uh, What is in your opinion best answer to Lucian Nami? I say Zeri Yumi. Otherwise, I think it's OP. Like, maybe you can play like some all in burger lane. Like, you play some burger. Like, like I could see, like, I could see, like, Aphelios Lulu being a bit better. For example, if, if it's 13.2, like, let's say you can play, buy Infinity Edge second. Oh, shit, Aphelios. Wow, I feel your stonks. Kate Lux could be, could be played into Lushinami. Could be, yeah. Just break the combo with a little Draven Nami. Kaiser's still good. Like Kaiser, we can, like, if we really want to put Kaiser up there, yeah, because you buy every skin and you're funding everything, you we put Kaiser up there. Like you need Big Mac, Whooper, Chicken Nuggets, Spicy Nuggets with Sweet and Sour Sauce. Like maybe this, that's something you can play, you know? Something like that, you know? I don't know. I think I think Sivir is like way lower if it isn't for, for Yumi. Like... Let's just do this. You meet here. <laughs> Seraphim could be fine. Like Seraphim could be laneable bot. I think that's a fair champ. Any chance the Kogma is viable in Dilution because of range? You could definitely play... Like... Thing is... Lulu has been nerfed, okay? And those nerfs matter. Uh, there is... Like, we could say there's a Lulu tier, okay? Lulu tier. Lulu tier. Bro, this tier list is getting really long. So Lulu tier is Aphelios. Kogma. And then I can't do another Zeri, sadly. But the, but these champs could potentially be played into Lucian Army, right? For sure. Could be. But... Nation is Lucian Army is just too OP, guys. It's just too OP. It's like later on, it's like they have fucking Gale Force and... And then you just get uh, Bobby Shmurdled. It just sucks. Okay, let's uh, make a little print.
All right, finally for support. Let's press a new one. Okay, so we already know about Nami. We already know about uh, Yumi. Okay, so these these are the big dogs. Okay, big dogs, big bowls. Second, Heimdinger. Honestly, Loki Ash belongs here too. I think Ash is really OP. Will you post a tier list? Uh, maybe. It will, it will be on YouTube. And there will be a link on YouTube. Uh, let's, let me think. What else is there? Um, Lux. I think Lux pretty decent. Karma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lulu, Renata, Litzcrank, help me guys, help me, Bard, Soraka, Naughty Leona Zyra, come on man <laughs> Jin <laughs> Fucking don't I don't wanna see Jin in my games Brom thing is, it's like, it needs to be like this, honestly. Guys, let's, let's, let's talk about uh, champs that, uh, let's talk about champs that um, can be played, okay? Amumu, sure. I think Trash is gonna have a really hard time right now. Yeah, I... I it's like... Timo, come on, come on, man! Stop wasting everybody's time. <laughs> it is Timo. Bro. Yo, thank you my Jira Spike for the gift itself. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Bro, like, do, do you guys didn't know about this shit? Let me show you this shit, okay? You People are, like, question marking about Azir, okay? Well, if we look at what happened in... <laughs> it's like... Do, do you guys won't believe this, by the way? You won't believe it. You won't believe it, by the way. People, people think we are trolling. But, um... Shit, I can't find the tournament. Where, where the fuck is the tournament? Uh... Uh, uh, let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this. And uh, 
It's not recorded, man. Fuck. Guys, I'm not crazy. <laughs> there were games of Aussie support in competitive. I promise. How about Demacia Cup? Demacia Cup. Demacia Cup. But did the name change the Massey Cup? Or the 2021 winner, Winter? I'm hallucinating, huh? I'm hallucinating? Okay. Oh. Yes. We found it. We found it. We found it. We found it. Game was forfeited. Okay, this is Azimid. Game was forfeited. Bro, so many FFs. Where is it? Billy Billy. Round two, maybe quarters. Here it is, guys. Here it is. Look at this, man. Look at this. Look! Azir support! Okay, you can't look. Look at it, guys, look! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> look! And then... Game 3 runs it back. <laughs> right through the Counter-Strike! Let's run it back. <laughs> Varus Azir in the bot lane. What does it do though? Bro, it pokes and hits I'm hitting it towards I guess. <laughs> IG was sandbagging, I guess. Azir works where there's sand and shit. Yeah, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at, guys. You can build Umbral Glade for vision control. I don't think your Azir uh, soldiers... It, it doesn't count. Yeah, I think... I think this is it, guys. Perfection. All right. I don't know why this picture is here, but I was considering posting this on Twitter. Fiesta, I'll make you remember the name Fiesta. <laughs> I thought this was hilarious. Uh, tears. Let's see. Three, week one. All right, so this is top lane. This is where I put top lane. This is where I would do jungle. This is where I did mid lane. This is my AD carries. Honestly, Jin should be higher. Jin should be higher. Uh, Jin higher. B tier. Like, Jin should be higher. That's the description. Correction. Am I in shy tier if I play Graves top lane? XF? Are you in the LEC? Or are you in gold? It's a very important difference.
All right, guys. I'm going to grab some.